So as we all know, and that's why we are all here, the community-based voluntary counseling and testing, it plays a very important role in reaching the most vulnerable communities and groups, and also to support them in their HIV, in learning their HIV status, in accessing treatment and care. Also, we all know that in many countries in the region, the services face quite a lot of barriers among them, the funding barriers, legal barriers, structural barriers, and also, we know that despite all of this, the civil society organizations still continue to do community-based services and testing. And that was especially was very seen and crucial in the COVID-19 pandemic, where um, there was a limitation to accessing the testing and still civil society organizations managed to find a way to continue pro providing the services to the communities they serve. Um, so what I will be talking today is, as I mentioned already, is part of the project community-led and based HIV services key to ending the HIV epidemic in Europe and Central Asia. This is a project that was funded by Gilead as part of the Zero In project, and it had several pillars. So one was very much focused on the self-testing, and within that focus, um, there was a pilot campaign on self-testing in Italy called Just Lila. That's something that we had one of the webinars on, and we will have more materials published on the page that I mentioned before. Um, we had also a survey uh, in the COBA test network asking about the experience of the uh, network members on the self-testing. Um, self and another part was on... Um, um, up, up, well, updating the um, Cobatas data tool and also creating a new Cobatas appointment tool. We had another webinar in June on that. And the final part um, was to collect data and to look at the policy and legal barriers from the civil society perspective. So as you know, or many of you know, last year we have sent out a survey and we collected some data. We are a bit late with analyzing this, but we're going to publish it very soon. So overall, we received 38 responses from 28 countries in Europe and Central Asia, which were quite representative to the diversity of the region. Data was collected not only from the COBA test network members, but also from its Action Europe um, members, and also shared wider with other organizations like ATG and also in the civil society forum. Um, so questionnaire looked at the general information about the sites, about the legal and policy situation as defined and as experienced by the organizations, um, how the linkage to care is organized, how the funding is organized, etc. And also we looked at the several international and European policies and guidelines and how they see community-based testing. Um, originally, I wanted to talk first about the policies, but then I decided that I will rather talk first about what we have found and then how it is supported and seen by the European policies. So that might not be fully logical in my presentation, but this was a last second decision which I made. Sorry for that. So among the countries that uh, we received information was the one that are on the screen. Um, so, unfortunately, some countries we, we did not receive, and I think um, we are still happy to receive and include them. Um, so, you can see this is 28 countries from the region. And then I will jump directly how the community-based testing is presented and was reported by the countries and organizations in these countries. So, the CVVST services were at least in some form um, presented in all of the countries. So um, those countries that could not do the testing itself, at least in the form of pre and post counseling, it was present. So in 24 out of 28 countries, um, the community based testing is reported to be legal or uh, like or um, to some extent legal. So with exceptions. Usually the exception is um, related to the confirmatory testing and also to the need for a medical worker to be present or to be actively more or less more or less actively involved in the performance performing of testing. So we have another four countries which have a bit tricky situation. So we have Hungary where local civil society organizations cannot perform testing, but they can do um, they can do pre post counseling and they can refer uh, people to the healthcare facilities. 
Um, so, and they can do in 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 a, in a way they can do the anonymous pre-screening of the of the um, of the population they are working with. Um, so, in Turkey, the anonymous testing can be performed only by the public health clinics, which hold a special license from the Ministry of Health to provide such testing. In practice, these clinics are located in the areas where the high representations of the LGBTQ plus community is and the um, organizations in Turkey they closely cooperate with these clinics uh, to ensure that the people are reaching the testing. And then we have two other examples which I just call gray area, which is Romania and Cyprus. And um, these are the countries where um, community-based testing is as I called in so-called gray area. It's not really um, doesn't really have a proper legal framework. Um, but at the same time, how NGOs experience this is totally different. So from what we received information from Romania, that because the organizations, even though they provide testing, they are in the gray zone, it makes them unavailable often to apply for the funding for the testing because this is a service which is not properly recognized. While in Cyprus, it's absolutely the opposite situation. While they are in gray area, they are still available to, they are still possible to apply for the funding. They closely cooperate with the medical center. And actually they're quite happy of not having a very strict and over um, bureaucratic uh, legal framework for the community-based testing. So even though situations are a bit similar, the experience of organization is very, very different. Um, yes, um, also we had um, just, this is just a, a kind of quick slide on the sizes of different services that um, we collected information from. So they were different from very small to very big one. And the, this also very much um, is connected to the situation in the country. So uh, whether there are legal barriers, what kind of barriers, availability of self-testing. So um, the country where the, was the most performed community-based testing was Georgia, as was reported. And the least was Malta. And with Malta, it's interesting because most of their clients of organization, they prefer the self-testing. Um, so the, it can be like accompanied self-testing, but this is the choice that is more available and just easier to perform. And that is the choice that is often recommended more to the clients. Yes, um, one second. So among the test, among the services that are provided, um, these are um, HIV rapid testing and counseling. Um, some organizations have a right to do in different forms HIV confirmatory testing. I'm going to come back to this a bit later. Um, then viral hepatitis testing, counseling, viral hepatitis confirmatory testing, STI testing and counseling, PrEP counseling. There was organizations who provide scam sex counseling and others. Um, um, yes. So. Um, I'm gonna go next because I will come back a bit later on the confirmatory um, confirmatory testing. So to the question, who can perform rapid testing in your country? So what kind of qualification is needed for the performance of the HIV testing? Um, so it's very much looking at what we saw, it very much depends on the level of attention given to HIV response in the country. So in the countries where there is more or less strong focus on HIV and STI profession, official national training for lay providers is available and the lay providers can do the testing. Um, there are some situations like in Germany where technically there should be a medical a person on the premises or in the building. Um, maybe later in the discussion that can be a bit corrected for me. Um, so in some of the countries, we have a training which is provided by the organizations and it is considered as sufficient. So this is the case in Georgia, Ireland and Portugal. Um, in some countries, the rapid HIV testing can be performed or by medical staff or under the supervision of medical staff. Um, or organizations closely work with the HIV clinics. And then there are other countries like Denmark, Sweden, Serbia, where um, this is very much depends on the license that is held for the specific service providers. So some things need just an extra um, licensing for that. Um, yes. So um, going to the next one. When we're talking about more national training for lay providers, um, 
So official national training provided in 10 countries out of the 28 countries, and it is often done by the HEV centers. And in the rest countries, um, um, Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, my my screen just 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 froze. Okay, um, yes. And then in the other countries, um, uh, this is just one of the activities where it's still performed in a different ways under the supervision of the medical staff or um, or as I as I mentioned before. Um, so when it comes to the confirmatory HIV testing, and I find this very interesting. So majority countries, this is not possible to perform because a lot of countries cannot really collect the samples. However, we had a several cases or several um, reported information that, for example, it is possible in four countries. So um, in Austria, it is possible within the um, organization, the civil society organization, to sample, uh, to send a sample to a laboratory. So it will be done in the premises of the organization. However, it will be done by the doctor at the premises of organization. Um, so similar to Austria in Poland, it is possible also to collect blood samples and send them to laboratory. Um, in Germany, it's similar to Austria that um, blood sampling for purpose of confirmatory testing is possible if there is a medical doctor at the premises. And then one of the interesting case was that in Spain, um, one of the organizations um, reported they actually use a confirmatory PCR test, which they use to do it within their settings to perform a confirmatory testing. And then we have a special case of Slovenia, which we have been struggled to put it everywhere, since in Slovenia they don't do rapid testing, they do only laboratory testing. So all the testing is basically a sampling, which is then either referred or sent to a laboratory. And they have a special agreement with the, uh, with the laboratory, with the National Institute, where um, they pay in a specific amount of money, um, and it doesn't really depend on the number of tests which is collect, which is um, which is performed. So Slovenia is a bit a uh, very specific situation. Um, when it comes to linkage to care, most of the organizations said that it's not really a problem once there is a reactive test. Um, so um, in some of the countries, and it depends on the geographical and the way the system is organized, that often uh, clients can be accompanied to the appointment for the confirmatory testing or for the linkage to care. Um, and um, it is often free of charge, which is also, um, yeah, um, one of the fundings. Um, um, when it comes to the funding of test kits, um, so the funding has been divided into a very, um, it, it, it has several um, sources. So it can be national public funding, international funding and private donations. It can be combined or it's other. So often organizations um, rely on other sources to find the funding for the test kits. So it can be either donations from pharmaceutical companies or um, it can be purchased from other budgets, which is not national budgets. And in some countries like Kyrgyzstan and Russia, and also in some countries of the um, Eastern European region and Central Asian, um, the tests are funded by the Global Fund or other international sources. And when it comes to the inclusion of CBVCT testing results in the national surveillance system, so out of those who reported that in 16 countries, the data from the CVCT are reported to the national bodies, um, often in an anonymized form due to the nature of the CVCT services. Um, and in, other in others, it is assumed since the organizations cannot do the confirmatory testing, so it's not always clear whether the test is reactive in the end. Um, it is assumed that the information is getting into the surveillance system, but it's not really um, like officially recognized. Um, and in general, there was several advocacy topics which we identified. So we can all categorize them into three, which would be financial, legal, and systemic or structural, depends what you like more, sound of which word. Um, so among the financial, um, this would be that, and this is the effect of the CBVCT being not part of the National HIV Plan or guidelines. 
So they are not part of the overall funding, which is the um, which is um, dedicated to the HIV response. Um, so one of the topics is, of course, advocacy of the advocacy should aim at the securing of the sustainability of the funding. Um, this is not only comes for the test kits, but also for the work that is uh, performed for the staff salaries, etc. And then there is another issue which is a bit specific that even those countries and organizations that receive the uh, funding, it's always, of course, yearly funding. And the whole bureaucracy around this issue, it's very, very difficult. So that would be another advocacy topic, which something that we would need to focus is actually making the access to the funding much easier um, and much more streamlined. Um, and then, yes, um, there is also often an issue when CBVCTs are not seen as essential services and they're not included in the HIV response that the financial burden, financial burden of the services, even though they prove to be very crucial, especially in the COVID time, it's still on the hands of the organizations, including fundraising and, and, and all, all these efforts. So when it comes to the legal issues and legal advocacy issues, and I decided to not call it every time barriers, but rather the topics that we need to um, um, approach, uh, would be again the recognition of the CBVCT and specifically recognition of testing by lay providers. And that is often a case or it's often an issue of organizations or of the countries where the lay providers testing is not either recognized or there should be a medical doctor not even in the room, but at the premises. Um, and international guidelines are saying are not supporting this. And I'm going to come to this later. Um, yes. Um, and then when we're talking about the systemic um, advocacy issues or structural, we're talking about in general that civil society organizations and CBVCT work is not really recognized and is not seen as important enough, even though there are quite a lot of proof that this is not the case, um, that CBVCT is actually crucial in reaching organ in, in reaching communities that we know are not reached by the traditional um, healthcare settings. So um, we need to also push for the uh, recognition of the international guidelines and recommendations when it comes to the community-based testing and the role of communities in HIV response. Which brings me to something very specific, and I'm going to go quickly through the international um, recommendations and guidelines. As you know, global um, the world did not reach the global HIV targets of 1990. Um, this is due to many reasons, but again, one of them is the lack of funding, the lack of political will, and an increase of inequalities, which you very much um, observed for the last years, and COVID just brought more issues to that. And as a response to that, the um, UNAIDS Program Coordinating Board adopted a new global aid strategy for 2021. Um, this global aid strategy replaced the previous, uh, was putting new goals, but at the same time was putting communities and people in the center. Um, so focusing also on inequalities as a driving source of HIV. So uh, when we are talking about the UNA's 2025 target targets, now we are talking about 95, 95, 95 as a replacement for 1990. But the big also difference is that this time we are talking that uh, HIV response and ending AIDS is not possible without the um, proper involvement of communities, of um, community response, and then the whole response of the HIV should focus around those people who are not reached and around the communities that are the most um, affected by the HIV. Um, so this is when we are talking about the international UN AIDS, um, global AIDS uh, strategy. However, we also have our beautiful World Health Organization that also recommends community-based testing for many, many years. It's already for 10 years at least that they're supporting to expand the testing frequency and coverage and reaching those communities that are not, uh, for many reasons, are not reached by the regular medical settings. So um, the WHO emphasized very much on the importance of trained lay providers and peers who are the one who can do HIV rapid diagnose testing and the community-based testing. Uh, when we are talking about um, 
differentiated strategy, and this is what WHO are talking, that only differentiated approach to testing is should be in the center of HIV testing strategies. We're talking about several several um, testing strategies. So one would be facility-based testing, which is the medical setting testing. Another one, community-based testing services. So this can be provided within the specific communities outside of healthcare settings. It can take various form, including testing at fixed locations, mobile outreach, hotspots, testing at community sites and, event, and events, and HIV self-testing as another strategy of how to um, expand that testing. Um, um, also, an important thing, if you wanted to, um, if you want to reach the 1995-95-95-95 goals, especially the first 95, um, in order to the improve strategy for testing, they also need to focus on the three important things. One would be the integration, which is something that has been happening for the last years, we observe, and that's something that is very much appreciated by the communities. So to have HIV testing um, alongside the tuberculosis, viral hepatitis, STI, sexual health care access. Um, we are talking about decentralization, so I'm providing HIV testing in location, which would be closer to people. However, we also know that decentralization, if you're talking about medical settings, is not always welcomed because people don't want to be outed or don't want to go to the special centers where they can be outed in the in the if, if they if it's in like rural areas or it's a, if it's a difficult to keep the anonymity and this is where the community based testing is also very much welcomed and another thing which is task sharing which is sharing the burden of the healthcare system with the communities to perform the HIV testing by the lay providers by the peers and I have been emphasized on this several times and I continue to emphasize on this that this is very much what is supported by the international recommendations and guidelines. So um, WHO provides specific recommendations for HIV testing community based in different um, national setting based on the HIV burden. So in high HIV burden settings, the community-based test testing services um, is recommended to target all particular key populations. And in the low HIV burden settings, it's very much is, um, recommended to focus on the key populations. And again, trained lay providers who have received proper training and supervision to use rapid HIV tests can independently conduct safe and effective community-based HIV testing services. Um, um, yes, and then it's just one more slide, which I'm not going to focus again too much, that this is the WHO World Health Organization recommend the lay peers, trained lay peers are the most suitable for conducting, for conducting HIV diagnostic tests and that national regulations and policies should support it and enable this. Um, and just quickly a bit about ECDC. ECDC also recommends community-based testing and self-testing as effective um, ways to increase coverage of HIV testing. Uh, we know also that many countries or some countries have an outdated national guidelines and policies, and that's something that needs to be updated in accordance to the latest international guidelines. And um, that would be one of the big priorities, how we can improve the HIV testing in the region. And just for a quick conclusion, so again, I'm not going to talk too much here, but as we know, community-based testing plays a crucial role in expanding access to HIV services, especially for key populations. However, despite the progress, we still see that organizations face a lot of barriers. Um, among the financial barriers, legal restrictions on performance of the testing, and there are uh, systemic issues as well, which, which stops the increase and scale up of the services. And it is crucial to adopt and implement international guidelines when it comes to the national policies on these topics.